How do you charge your phone? So you already know there is no electricity in Africa. We depend on lightning from the God of Thunder and it's quite difficult to use lightning to charge our phones. So what we do is every time we have to charge our phones, we go to the community river filled with hippos and then we pick a hippo and insert this end of the cable into the hippo's butt and put this other part of the cable into your phone. Then in less than one minute, your phone will be fully charged. And it's so fast because the community hippos bot emits so much high voltage that it charges the phone super fast. That is exactly what I did this morning and I got my phone fully charged. And so that's how we charge our phones in Africa. We actually don't have internet in Africa, so I'm going to tell you a secret on how we get internet to be able to do our TikToks. So every end of the week, uh, our community chief priest comes to every family in the community and then does some incantations, stab his staff three times, blow on something, and then all of a sudden, the internet pops up on your phone. I told you guys! You just got internet! That's how we get internet in Africa, guys. I told you, I told you. Africans don't drive cars. We actually have two methods of transportation. For those of us who are poor, we swing from tree to tree like George of the Jungle to get to our location. And then for the rich ones, they actually ride their wild animals. For example, the rich people in North Africa ride their camels. Those in South Africa ride their lions and cheetahs. And then those in East Africa ride on their elephants. And for those of us in West Africa, that's the rich ones in West Africa, they jump on the back of their baboons to get to their location. So no, we don't have cars in Africa. We just depend on the wildlife for transportation. Sure. yeah do you guys have technology in Africa no we actually don't have technology in Africa we really don't know what that is but anytime we have difficulty in doing stuff physically or our intelligence fails us we just do a chant and summon the spirit of the black panther and then that spirit is going to possess us and manifest through us and then we are able to do stuff physically fast like super fast faster than an average human being and then we now exhibit high IQ like super high IQ and this saves us a lot of manpower and that's how we survive without technology in Africa so yeah Yes, there's no water in Africa. We drink our saliva. Let me explain. Every end of the month, we gather at our community square for a spitting festival called the Nkalago Festival. In this festival, all the men do a spiritual chant led by the wizard of the community. And then all the women and girls take turns to spit in a drum. Now, after the spitting is done, two pieces of alum is thrown into these drums and then they are preserved for two days. Then after two days, we go there, we open the drum, the saliva is purified, we can now take it and drink and that is what we fetch and refill everything we need to refill and that is what we drink sometimes i donate my own saliva but it's not all the time it's only when i have enough flair yeah so cheers africa africa yeah yes he's correct africa used to be a country in europe i say used to be because we move a lot probably at the time of that video we were still in europe but now we've moved again now, every time there is a new rainbow in the sky, it's usually our sign as Africans to just move to another continent or somewhere else. And recently, the association of the Wakandan forces moved us to space. So now we have our own planet called Planet Africa in space. And um, maybe we'll look forward to the next rainbow. Then we'll decide where next we are moving to. So yeah, he is very correct. Africa used to be a country in Europe. Wait, is Egypt in Africa? No, sweetie. Egypt is in China. China. Yeah. Wait. Do you all live in thatched huts? So we all know Africa is a very big jungle filled with poor people. 
So not all of us can actually afford to live in thatched huts. The only people that can afford to live in huts in Africa are rich people. For those of us who are poor, we just sustain ourselves in the jungle and live wherever we find ourselves. Sometimes we sleep under banana or plantain trees. Sometimes we sleep on top of palm trees or iroko trees. The bigger the tree, the bigger the family size. And then sometimes we also sleep in the lion's den, beside the lions, depending on wherever we find ourselves. And then um, those in Northern Africa are lucky because those ones run to the pyramid of Egypt to sleep every time it's night time. So aside from those in Northern Africa, the rest of us actually just live in the jungle and sleep wherever we find ourselves. Uh, the evil forest in Africa is believed to be an enchanted forest filled with ghosts and monsters and like evil demons, just basically haunted forest. And the ghosts of the people who are there are believed to be the ghosts of people who probably died when they ventured into the evil forest by mistake or they were sent there as punishment for a crime they committed. Some people were actually thrown into the evil forest after they died, especially if they lived a life of crime and terrorized the public. And also, the ghosts there are also believed to be the ghosts of people who were actually, uh, you know, who were actually terrible people and were thrown in there alive to suffer and be punished for what they did to the community. So that's basically what the evil forest in Africa is. It differs from one African country to another, but I'm so sure that it's no longer that common anymore because of religion and civilization. But that's basically what the evil forest is all about. And that's what I heard from my grandma. Africa is no longer a country. Africa is a planet next to Pluto. And our capital galaxy is Wakanda. It's so easy for us to move from Earth and back thanks to our super baboons that are very magical. And that's why you see us on Earth with you. But we are not Earthlings. We are from out of space. So yeah, we are not a country or continent. Africa is a planet. Wakanda forever. Yeah. There is no food in Africa because every time we are hungry, the community chief priest sends our strongest hunters to the evil forest to go and get us food. But they never make it back alive. <laughs> because the evil in the evil forest swallows them. And our community chief priest does everything, like everything to make sure that they succeed. But they never come back. And that's why we starve. Like, we have to depend on eating grass and stones. That's why we don't have food in Africa. Please send us food. Every African is a zombie. We are all walking dead. Even as I'm talking to you right now, I'm not real. I passed away years ago due to starvation. So your mom is right. The ancestors just actually let us live our lives as zombies so that we can fulfill our dreams and goals before we go over to the other side. So please tell your mom to support us in any way she can and send us money or something because we are really dying of starvation in Africa. Yeah. African women don't wear makeup. Like, there are no makeup products in Africa, really. To beautify ourselves, there are four basic steps we take, plus one additional step. First, we get a special peanut butter made by the oldest woman in our community and apply it as a base. Then we layer it with a very rare clay soil that can only be found at the center of the Sahara Desert. And then we cut off some feathers from our chicken and use it as our lashes, to extend our lashes. And then we get charcoal to make our eyebrows pop. And then we put a mixture of shea butter and hibiscus on our lips to stain the lip. And that is how we beautify ourselves in Africa. Really, we do not have any makeup in Africa. Yeah. You know how they say all Africans know each other? It's true. I'm just coming back from Ghana where I went to buy fish. My brother and my sister, I saw Joshua. <sighs> Joshua from Kenya village. My Africans, you all know Joshua now. Joshua the hunter, the one that his father has bald head. Yes, that Joshua. <sighs> I just saw Joshua stealing mangoes from the tree of the most wicked witch in Nigeria. <laughs> I had to run away before they, before they see me as an accomplice. <sighs> Guys, if you know Joshua, better tell him to return those mangoes. Tell him to return the mangoes oh, before he incurs the, the wrath of the gods. Tell Joshua to return the mangoes. Oh. Africans don't watch TV. In fact, we don't know what TVs are. 
what we do is every new moon we gather at our king's palace in zamunda around the biggest rock in the palace that has drawings from our ancestors and then once the reflection of the moon hits this rock those drawings and characters start to move and that is what we watch for entertainment so no we do not have tv we do not have tv in africa africans don't watch so they do speak nigerian in africa yes you're right nigeria is a language in africa africa is a community with 54 ethnic groups and we speak six major languages across africa the first one is Afrikaanese, which is the one where we click our tongues. That one is actually the most spoken language in the whole of Africa. And then we have Wakandish, which is the one from Wakanda. Then we also speak South Africa. South Africa is a language. Egypt is a language. Uganda is a language. And also Nigeria, like you just said. So you're right. Nigerian is a language in Africa. And um, the others too, like I mentioned. Yeah. Okay. Africa does not have electricity. What we do is every end of the week, the oldest witch in our community goes to the top of the highest mountain in Wakanda and then summons the god of thunder, Madioha. When he strikes with thunder and lightning, she then captures the lightning in bottles and distributes it to families across the community. So that's how we survive without electricity in Africa. We depend on lightning from the god of thunder. Rain does not just fall in Africa because our sky is different. So anytime we want water for our crops or just for our basic needs, we go to the village square and then our community chief priest is going to do a chant while we do the rain dance. And then immediately after the rain dance, just like magic, it starts to pour and then we use our water for what we want to use it for. But aside that, on a normal day, it just doesn't rain because, you know, our sky, like I said, is different. So we need the rain dance. Yeah.